Welcome to Stories Found. Each week we feature funny, weird, and mostly true stories from writers, artists, and storytellers around the world. I'm your host, Ava Love Hanna, a writer and humorist from Austin, Texas. Joining me is my writing partner, audio engineer, and all-around cool guy, Paul Hanna. You're listening to Stories Found. Our featured organization this week is Whiskey Theater Factory, a theater collective based in Orlando, Florida, with the mission to produce meaningful theatrical productions that uplift, develop, and celebrate emerging and untapped voices. I adore the work being done by WTF, and I urge you to visit them at whiskeytheaterfactory.com to learn more. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Stories Found. This week, we're talking to your favorite playwright and mine, Bethany Dickens Ossoff. Bethany is a freelance playwright, dramaturg, and theater artist, and a co-founder of Whiskey Theater Factory and the Fragmented Theater Festival. As both a writer and producer, she is obsessed with plays that deconstruct and take unusual perspectives on gender and sexuality, challenging audiences, and serving untapped artistic voices by creating meaningful roles for women. Bethany is smart, funny, and amazingly talented. She's one of those writers that makes writing look just so easy, and you can't hate her for it because, well, she's just so darn likable, too. You may remember her from a prior episode when we featured her play, What's in the Basement, Honey? This time, she's carrying us up out of the basement and into the skies with Bird Girl and the Hammer. Hi, Bethany. Welcome back to Stories Found. We're really excited to have you here today to chat about your play, Bird Girl and the Hammer. Thanks. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here again. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So first off, you know, as always, tell us a little bit about this play. What are we going to hear today? Um, So this play is about, um, it expresses like my love for superheroes and that whole genre. (laughs) In the play, we've got, um, there's an attack on, you know, the city. Whatever, mm-hmm. wherever that is um and uh they uh, are struggling to defeat this giant monster that's come out of the sky so um the public really needs the help of bird girl but she's not feeling um up to it and so uh her friend the hammer comes in to try and persuade her to to join in the fight and defeat this monster um but there's just a lot there's just a lot going on and uh she's not really in a place right now where that is sounding <laughs> that is sounding feasible so um they you know that they, they it comes out that they have you know they've had a relationship and mm-hmm. and um the hammer is very concerned and uh you know it's 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 just my i wrote it during the pandemic and it still <laughs> feels very pandemic-y to me and that um we were asking a lot of ourselves during that time, right. maybe unnecessarily, maybe we, you know, there, I think uh, the, the, this was before, I think there was a very healthy uh, re-examination for a lot of people of mm-hmm. uh, their, their, their mental health and self-care and things like that. So yeah, that's a little bit about what the play is about. Well, I think the script is a lot of fun. I mean, I I love the use of the superhero genre you know, for a lot of reasons. I mean, we're pretty big nerds over here, but <laughs> but specifically for this play's structure. I mean, superheroes tend to come with this preconceived idea of strength and competence, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. your script really plays against that, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think that that's something that I have felt personally as someone who runs a theater collective, as someone who self produces and produces a lot of theater, Mm -hmm. there is this constant pressure that I feel like I'm not a superhero. It's not the stakes (laughs) are not world ending, but I definitely empathize with that of you're expected to just be on all the time. You can't have a bad day. You can't have a day where you just say no or turn yourself off. Um, and I say all of that knowing that, yes, actually you can do that. And the mm-hmm. end of the play kind of proves that. And it's not going to be the end of the world, even if you are a superhero. <laughs> uh, but that's just the mentality that we have of, oh, if I if I take a step back, everything's just going to fall apart, um, which is not uh, the case, I think. Right. And, and I think this... Well, I think the script, that juxtaposition of this sort of the competent hero who will save everyone to someone who, just like the rest of us, has bad days and can't leave the house. And it's it's deeply funny, but it really helps set the stage mm-hmm. for the conflict, which is is both internal and external for, for uh, Bird Girl. And I think that's, 
I think that I think it helps create a really rich comedy here. Um, I will say one other thing that really stood out to me about this script is it hides some deep layers. And I think that it um, it's a great example of Jungian and Antiodromia, which I know everybody's just thinking about that all the time, right? But uh, <laughs> just in case anyone doesn't know what that is, it's the idea that when pushed to their extremes, things turn into the opposite. And, mm. and I think we see that with Bird Girl, right? She loses the thing that makes her unique, her ability to fly when she's pushed to this extreme. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, You're like, I was just hoping someone would mention. Observation, and yes, I totally meant to do all of that. <laughs> <laughs> of yeah, course. I mean, I think that I think that it, that that hammer is 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 there to with the right intentions to try mm -hmm. and be a good um, friend. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. That the pressure from others to to deliver to perform, right. Um, that yeah, that can end up being the thing that causes you to lose, you know, the thing it, that makes you who you are. Yeah, what makes you who you are, and also what you love and what you enjoy. Like I just have felt like again, this is you know a very analogous to I feel like theater during the pandemic where mm -hmm. things just stopped being fun after a while, but we all felt like we couldn't say that. Like <laughs> you know, exactly. the real world just really came in and. And it was about for a while trying to find ways to make space for that and make space for people to just be people. Um, exactly. And and it's okay if it's not always, if it's not always fun or it's not always life giving, it, it doesn't have to be everything, you know? Right. And I think, so when young, when young, of course I'm coming back to young, right. Uh, in Antiodromia, it precedes a rebirth of personality. And I think that we really do see that in the script. And we really did go through that in the pandemic when we were pushed to the extremes, we had to sort of go, okay, well, who am I now? And I, and we mm -hmm. see that with Bird Girl and the Hammer. I think both in relationship to what they do and, and to their role as superheroes mm -hmm. and to their role as, you know, to partners to each other, both prior and current. So how important was it for you to have the superhero be a woman in this script? Is this play making a statement about the difficulty of women's labor, both seen and unseen? I think it absolutely is. I mean, and and that's just probably because it comes from my perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that it, it is it is a struggle. I remember when I had a friend not too long ago tell me that she wished she could have three days off a week mm -hmm. because she needed a day to take care of like her family and all the household stuff. <laughs> she needed a day for appointments. And then she needed a day to just be herself. Right. And there, but there was there was no available day for that. Um, so, yes, I absolutely believe 100 percent. I mean, this is just statistically a fact that um, that so much falls on women. And, and during the pandemic, we saw that specifically in terms mm -hmm. of household chores and, and those kinds of roles, uh, motherhood, things like that. Um, and child rearing, but really, I, I would posit that it's everywhere. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I would posit that <laughs> any collective that I have been a part of, um, whether or not it's run by whoever runs it, or or, or how, you know, even in, in a very healthy culture, um, mm -hmm. there just is this perspective or this this underlying assumption that that women are just more available and that we're exactly. more compliant to do things and we're more willing to pitch in and sometimes we are because we are you know responding to that culture and wanting to to fit in and be be a value team player um and but it is it is it is toxic and it's something that needs to be continuously examined of how is the work being divvied up um and, right. and how are we approaching that and just being really conscious of it for sure well i know that for me there there is a feeling if i don't do this the world will end right and i think you've <laughs> expressed that maybe sometimes we can take a step back as women and and someone else will step in and the world won't end it just sort of feels like it will for a little <laughs> while <laughs> absolutely absolutely I think there are uh, I, this. I absolutely adore the script. There are so many other layers that you sort of manage to work into ten minutes. There is perfectionism. There's the masks mm -hmm. we wear, relational dynamics, feeling emotionally burdened, and I'm sure you were just thinking about each of these things individually as you wrote the playwright. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, you know, I'm working on so many levels. So many <laughs> levels. It's just, <laughs> but it, it really is. It's a beautiful script, and I think when you have something that comes together like this and is able to touch on all those topics, I think you've really got just a beautiful piece here. So 
final question and maybe the most important of all of them if you could have one superpower which would it be <laughs> if i could have one superpower um you know what this this is just going to uh reveal the fact that for everything i've just said up here i still struggle a lot with perfectionism and mm. like over commitment um i would love to stop time <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would love to stop time to get more done, but also be able to be better at turning toward people in, in right. special moments and just really enjoying uh, the present and being involved in the now. It's something I'm working on, but I think if I had the superpower to just stop time for a little bit. Uh, that would be really fun. So See, that is, yeah. that's a beautiful, thoughtful answer for me. I was just going to say, I just want super strength because I can't build <laughs> upper body strength. And I still have PTSD from the president's physical fitness test in elementary school oh, when yes. I couldn't do the bar hang. So <laughs> I think that's oh, my, it might be why I relate to bird girl when she can't fly. I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so. That's a good one. That's a good one. Super strength. Definitely super coming strength. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today, Bethany. We love having you on Stories Found. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I love everything you all do. And again, so happy to be here. Awesome. Stories Found is now proud to present Bird Girl and the Hammer by Bethany Dickens Ossoff. more about gel coat all around the city of megapolis citizens are trying to take shelter from the tentacled monstrosity now being referred to as octo doom but there seems to be no safe place many are wondering why the infamous superhero known as bird girl is nowhere to be found more importantly he knew what he was talking about well does it look good already okay jumbo scampi good for limited all for a price that will make you Bird girl. Nah. I hope you're decent. I'm coming in. Never stopped you before. There you are. What's the matter with you? The city's being attacked by some giant squid thing. Mm, somebody else's problem. Like whose? I don't know. The military? Well, you fire a gun at this thing, apparently it just sucks up and regurgitates the bullets. Why don't you and the rest of the Heroes League do something about it? Oh, right. Cool. I'll just tell Nightwitch to, to go do her telekinesis on it. Find out what it's thinking. Except it's not thinking. It's a giant squid. I'm sure it's thinking something. Sure. Every synonym for delicious. So you take care of it. You're super strong. I can't get near it. The thing's 18 stories tall. Well, I don't care. I'm on sabbatical. L look, if, if this is about us... It's not. I'm sorry I broke up with you. I, I didn't know a giant monster would invade from space or I would have timed it better. I told you it's not that. Then what is it? I mean, you love saving people. I do, but I can't. I can't fly. What the heck? You know, my power of flight is related to my internal gravitational balance. Uh, I thought it was just a thing you did. Usually I can, but today I can't. Sure you can. You just need a little motivation. Look, if you go defeat the giant octopus, I'll take you to Denny's. I don't want to go to Denny's. I don't want to go anywhere. Well, good, because if you don't get out there, there'll be no more Denny's in the whole world, because it'll be the squid's world, which I imagine is a lukewarm underwater hellscape. Look, don't pressure me. This just makes it worse. So what makes it better? Basically, ugh. right now my body is weighed down. I need 
to lighten it up. You mean emotionally? I guess. But I already tried. It's pointless. Is this because we broke up? No. Well, what am I supposed to think? I've never seen you like this. I never wanted you to. It, it just happens. Fortunately, it's never been timed with a world-ending event. Well, don't worry. We'll get through this. Knock, knock. Seriously? Ooh, I forgot. Uh, first, you gotta pretend that you're Batman. What? Or it doesn't make sense. Knock, knock. Um, that's not how it works. So then you say, who's there? How about you just break down the door like you always do? Hey, I'm trying to help. You're not helping. Leave me alone. You know what? Fine. You want to lay here and ruin everything? By which I mean literally everything, including Denny's. You can do that. I will go haplessly punch some tentacles and hope one of them has a consequential artery. Don't go. Okay. I'm gonna try. Yes! Oh, great. Um, or think about, uh, think about pancakes and the beach. Like when we went last January. Oh, it was freezing. It was kind of fun. We watched all of The Wire. You know, I've actually heard Barry is really good. We should watch it. No way. You come over for TV, we both know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. What do you mean? I mean, maybe we threw it away too fast. Well, I didn't. You did. Well, yeah, be because I felt like... You know when we first shared our secret identities? I was so excited. I thought, here's when I'll finally know her. Like, know her. Okay. Because you're a big deal. A total icon. But then you took off your mask and you were still so pretty and put together. That's not me all the time. And I feel like I'm finally seeing it. You like me like this? Babe, I can't even fly. You kind of look like you're floating. Hey, you are! Yeah. Um, so, uh, maybe we could get back together? Is, the, is that what you're saying? Do you hate me? Of course I don't. Jeez. You remember the night we went to the top of that building? Don't say it. We were supposed to be on patrol. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might propose. I thought that's why you flew me up there. Wow. That would have been big. I just never knew with you. I never knew what you were thinking. Well, I was happy. I flew, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, let's do it. Let's get back together. And you're really flying now. It's all better. Let's go. Okay, but it's not all better. What? Yeah, it is. You're flying. We're going to go kill this monster. It's all good. You, you didn't just tell me that so that I'd get my powers back, did you? Of course not. We, we can try again now that you're all back up and running. But, but sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I can't. No, I understand. Everybody gets sad sometimes. <sighs> That's that's a part of me, though. It's who I am. You said you wanted to know, to learn more about me. Look, don't be dramatic. 
Wow, I think you're coming back down to earth. Maybe we should talk about this later? You need to pick. You can't have the me that's perky and this big hero without having the part of me that also needs a break and doesn't want to do this anymore. You think I always want to do this job? Huh? I'm soaked with seawater. Half of it is probably Octodoom's backwash. Are you seriously making this about you? Whoop, babe, the flying went away. Um, uh, uh knock, knock. My gravitational center is really heavy. I don't think I'm going to be able to go out today. Seriously? It's not the end of the world. Yes, it is! Just look at the- Thanks to the efforts of local police, the Octodoom has been banished to the depths from whence it came. Oh. The superhero known as Shark Lad, who can speak to fish, is currently setting up a long-term solution by which recycled food waste will be deployed to satiate the giant beast. Law enforcement is telling me that the streets are now safe to walk. This is not, I repeat, this is not the end of the world. Well, <laughs> didn't see that one coming. Uh, but glad Shark Lad's getting some publicity. His leggings sure are sparkly. Made for TV. Huh. <laughs> yeah. You must feel... Um, Better? Now that that's over with? Not really. Oh, come on. The world got saved. I know. I just don't feel better. Oh. And... And that's okay. Here. Let me hold you. Well, just to warn you... Oh my god, you weigh a thousand pounds. <laughs> Good thing you've got super strength. Yeah. Yeah, I do. You've just heard Bird Girl and the Hammer by Bethany Dickens Ossoff. It was performed for you by Kate Eau Claire as Bird Girl, Joe Lorenz as the Hammer, and Ava Love Hanna as the announcer. This episode was edited and mixed for you by Paul Hanna and ELA Studios. If you'd like to read more of Bethany's work, and you know you do, head over to her website, bethanydickens.com, or you can find her on NPX, the new play exchange. We'll have a post on our website with more information about Bethany as well as bios and links to our very talented actors. And while you're there, make sure to check out Episode 7, which features our performance of Bethany's play, What's in the Basement, Honey? You can find all of that on our website, storiesfound.com. Our episode sponsor this week is Magic Jazz Creations. It's a woman, minority, and LGBTQ plus owned business based in Austin, Texas. Jasmine is a proud Latinx artist who creates jewelry and wearable art and specializes in chainmail and wire work. She offers creative, original pieces that are truly one of a kind. Make sure to check out her website at magicjazzcreations.com. That's M A G I K J A Z creations.com. We'll have a direct link to her store on storiesfound.com. Thanks for listening to Stories Found. We've been your hosts, Ava Love Hanna and Paul Hanna. Get more info about this week's episode, subscribe to our newsletter, or submit your own story and be a featured storyteller in a future episode. You can do all that and more on our website, storiesfound.com. Stories Found was recorded at ELA Studios deep in the heart of Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm.